afternoon. I'm Spot on Weather, meteorologist Matthew Euler, and welcome to my latest training video here on the Spot on Weather YouTube channel. And today, we're going to have to break this down into multiple pieces, but we'll start with the first part today. We're going to take a look at basic meteorology, a study of the Earth's atmosphere and its phenomenon, um, and Hopefully you get a lot out of this training video today. If you ever were curious about certain aspects of the atmosphere, specifically stability and instability, as well as various cloud types and what those clouds actually mean. I'm currently working on a guide right now, um, just basically using clouds to forecast the weather. And I'm hoping to get that out here uh, within the next four to six months. But it's, it's a very extensive project I'm doing on the side right now. Uh, but I'll be sure to share that um, once it is completed. And so come join the journey today here of basic meteorology and let's take a look at the atmospheric stability aspect as well as various cloud types. Now today, part one of this training, we will go up to through the low clouds. Um, I will then start part two of this training into the mid clouds. So I'll, I'll leave off at, at the low clouds after the low clouds are complete. Um, as that will be enough time here, so. And how appropriate that we have the sounds of thunder. And this is one heck of a picture here with a tornado and a cloud to ground, uh, ground lightning strike in the same picture. So uh, a little sound effects there for you to start today's training. All right, so today's learning objective is to identify various clouds and precipitation types. We won't quite get to the precipitation types just yet, but it's definitely coming here in future videos. So first, let's look at the cloud terminology and everything is Latin based. Um, so altum, whenever you see the prefixes altum, um, for example, alto, A-L-T-O, that generally indicates a cloud in the middle levels of, in height of the atmosphere. Cirrus, uh, basically refers to a lock of hair, a tuft of horse hair, those really wispy clouds, and I'll have pictures to show you what each of these clouds looks like. Cumulus clouds um, represent an accumulation, a heap, or a pile, like a pile look to the cloud. Nimbus, that particular Latin-based prefix, refers to a rainy cloud. And then we have stratus. Stratus means to, in Latin, to extend, to spread out flatten out or cover with a layer. So think layer-like clouds when we talk about stratus. All right, but first, before we get into looking at some of these cloud types, we actually need to look at what exactly is stability. Stability is simply just the state of equilibrium or balance in the atmosphere. And there's a couple factors that really govern or determine the stability in the atmosphere on any given day. The two main factors which determine atmospheric stability are the temperature and moisture of the atmosphere. So let's take a look at temperature now, just temperature alone. So initially when we have warm air, it's generally going to be more unstable. And the reason is, is because warm air is less dense or lighter than cold air. So because of that, that lower density of warm air, it's going to want to tend to rise in the vertical. And this rising air motion is conducive or favorable to cloud formation as a whole. On the other hand, let's take a look at cold air. Now, cold air is heavier and denser. It's always wanting to sink towards the Earth's surface. Uh, it's heavier than the warmer air. It, again, wants it to sink. It tends to sink. And sinking air is not conducive to cloud formation. Whenever the air sinks in the atmosphere, I want you to think about um, no clouds. So here is the differences again. You notice the red arrows here. That indicates upward or rising vertical air motion with, with warmer air because it's unstable. And then with cold air, you notice the blue arrows going down, indicating atmospheric stability. All right? So the air is sinking with colder air because it's heavier. Now, let's take a look and examine the moisture properties in determining stability. Moist air is generally considered unstable. And why is this? Because moist air is lighter or less dense than the drier air. 
Uh, moist air tends to rise because of this. And so when you combine both warmer air and moist air together into one, that generally leads to instability in the atmosphere, very unstable conditions. So the air is going to want to rise as these red arrows indicate. Dry air, on the other hand, is very stable and it leads to sinking air motion. It's heavier than the moist air and that dry and cold air, the combination of those two is very stable in the atmosphere. So if you ever notice on a winter's day when you have a bright blue sky, it's perfectly clear outside. Uh, we have high pressure building in where the air sinks. Um, the air tends to be much colder initially in the front side of the high pressure system. Um, that generally leads to a stable atmosphere. You just don't see any clouds on those type of days. Whereas in the summertime when the sun is much higher in the sky and the heating is much more direct in the summer, you tend to get a much more instability or unstable atmosphere because the air is heated so it warms, it wants to rise. Additionally, warmer air can hold more moisture than colder, drier air. So you get air that wants to rise and you sometimes get thunderstorms develop on hot summer days because of the instability, the unstable nature of that. Stable atmosphere now. With a stable atmosphere, air is forced to move to its original position. So in this example here with the blue ball, let's just imagine this blue ball is air parcel and initially we have something that's causing this air parcel to want to rise in the vertical in the atmosphere. Um, so air is initially forced to rise. You know, it could be something as simple as a cold front coming into the area, lifting the air or these air parcels. Um, but you notice it gets up to the one kilometer level here in the atmosphere, okay? Actually 1,000 feet, that the cave represents 1,000 feet. So at the 1,000 foot level, this parcel of air is forced to rise, but then notice how it sinks right back down to the surface. This is an example where the movement of air is suppressed. And this is an example of atmospheric stability where air is forced to move back to its original starting point. On the other hand, with an unstable atmosphere, the air is forced to move um, in the vertical and it continues in the direction in which it was moved. And so now the same example here, but now look, we're going all the way up higher above 1000 feet in the, above the surface. And notice how this air parcel represented by the red circle Notice how this air parcel continues to rise on an unstable weather day. So the movement of air is enhanced in this case in an unstable situation. All right, so clouds. Let's talk a little bit about clouds. When we talk about rising air motion, we, we must talk about clouds. And let's first talk about the cumulus that you would see on a hot summer day, those puffy clouds. Um, they generally indicate unstable atmospheric conditions where air is rising, it's warm, it's moist. Um, and, it, and these clouds consist of variable sized water droplets within them. Uh, the average lifespan of cumulus clouds is on the order of minutes to hours. And they're typically associated with uh, stronger vertical air motions, cumulus clouds. Um, and in some cases, this can lead to thunderstorm development. And they also have a greater vertical extent. You may have a cumulus cloud on a hot summer day, which the base of the cloud is about 1,500 feet above the ground. It may extend all the way up to about 40,000 feet above the ground. Now, other characteristic of cumulus clouds is they have sharp outlines or edges. They also can be composed of flatter bases. And they also have widely spaced smaller elements. And cumulus clouds generally lead to what's known as showery precipitation. Showery referring to precipitation that starts rapidly and ends just as rapidly as it started. So you might look out your window with, you see the cumulus clouds in the sky on a, on a summer day and you get a heavy downpour one minute and the next minute you, the rain stops. And so it's that quick of a transition when you have showery precipitation. Stratiform or stratus clouds on the other hand, generally indicate a stable atmosphere. And, and within the cloud, the water droplets are of uniform size. The average lifespan of stratus clouds is generally on the order of hours and they can last and persist all the way up to days. They have weaker vertical air motions within them. Um, stratus clouds have very little vertical extent. They're very flat like a blanket and they're generally more diffuse. They have more generally diffuse outlines or edges. They have flat bases as well as flat tops and they're closely spaced larger elements and whenever you see a stratus cloud, specifically in the winter time, 
um, you get more of continuous precipitation, one of those like really nasty rainy days from start to finish. Just a steady precipitation is a stratus cloud. You can get snow from stratus clouds as well if it's cold enough in the winter. All right, so now let's take a look at some of the what we call cloud genera. And we're going to examine the low clouds, okay? Now, how do we examine or identify clouds? One of the characteristics of clouds is its height or its etage above the ground. Um, so the low cloud bases are, are represented here, okay? And you'll notice no matter if we're in the polar region, which is from 60 to 90 degrees latitude, the temperate or mid-latitude region from 30 to 60 degrees latitude, or the tropical region, generally from 30 degrees south to 30 degrees north latitude, the low cloud general heights are all the same. The low clouds extend from near the surface to 6,500 feet above the ground. All right, so let's examine a couple of these low cloud types, okay? Now, more distinctly, the cloud types are divided into 27 total states of the sky. So we have nine low cloud types, we have nine middle cloud types, and we have nine high cloud types. All right, so a real simple way to break down more specific characteristics of these clouds is to identify it with a letter and a number. So in this case, we are going to talk about the low clouds. So you'll see every one of these upcoming slides I talk about low clouds will have an L. And that L prefix represents low, so low cloud. And then the one is just a numeric designation for each of these types of clouds. So low cloud type one is going to be referred to as a cumulus cloud. And with cumulus clouds, this L1 type cumulus anyway, there are a couple different types of cumulus clouds, I should say. We're going to start off with L1, uh, and these are the characteristics of an L1 cumulus cloud. They have slight or little vertical extent. They're very flat in, flat in appearance. They don't grow very tall in height at all. Um, smaller to medium-sized elements is common with this L1 cumulus type of cloud. Uh, they have widely spaced circular elements. There's a lot of blue sky between each of the individual cloud elements. And when you have these flattened cumulus clouds, these L1 cloud types, they generally represent fair weather associated with high pressure. And they're generally cotton or popcorn shaped. So let's take a look at what they look like. All right, so this would be an example of L1 clouds, a cumulus L1 cloud. So you notice there's very little vertical growth to these clouds. It's, they're mainly flat. Look on the horizon here. Even look at this location here. Notice how these clouds are mainly flat. They're kind of cotton ball looking, but they're flat. They're not growing tall. So this would be a day in which the weather is going to be fair, um, indicative of high pressure with sinking air coming down in between these different cloud elements. There's another example of L1 clouds. Oops, I'm sorry there, let me go back. Okay. Again, notice how they are generally flattened in appearance. Now, we do have a little bit of vertical buildup to these clouds on the horizon here. You kind of see it in the distance in this picture. But in general, they are overall flat, flattened clouds. That's your L1 cumulus type. And then finally, there's this, this uh, example of L1 cumulus. So again, flattened appearance. They're not growing very tall at all. So this indicates a stable atmosphere on this particular day. Right, so now let's move into another type of cumulus clouds. We can classify this as an L2, low cloud type two, towering cumulus cloud, or sometimes you see the abbreviation TCU. Now these have moderate vertical extent. So they are, they're growing a little bit more tall than the L1 clouds we just looked at. Uh, but generally that height of the cloud top is 25,000 feet or less. Um, they have medium to larger size circular elements the L2 towering cumulus have widely spaced circular elements. They may become clustered. Um, they generally represent fair weather, although, you know, when you start seeing this vertical development of these L2 towering cumulus clouds, it could be an indicator that the atmosphere is changing from stable to more unstable. They do have cauliflower shaped tops. All right, so here's an example of the L2 towering cumulus cloud type. So you notice how much more coverage of the sky these particular L2 clouds cover as compared to these, right? 
see how much blue sky you have in between these cloud elements. And now we go to L2 Tower and Cumulus, look how much more the sky is covered by clouds. And then you notice specifically this, these, we're starting to get more of a, a vertical development of these cumulus, the L2 Tower and Cumulus. See this? This white puffy area at the top, it's growing vertically a little bit more than the L1 clouds we just looked at. This is a great shot. You know, sometimes if you're flying in an airplane, you can really see some of these cool clouds right out, right outside the airplane window. And uh, sometimes you see these buildup of clouds like this. Um, really cool. So this is also Tower and Cumulus L2 example. I'm just showing you how tall these cloud tops are growing. And then this is another example of L2 Tower and Cumulus. I mean, look at this. This is, you can see the vertical development or vertical growth of this cloud. All right, now let's have a discussion on Cumulonimbus. Now, Cumulonimbus is the thunderstorm cloud. Um, it will be abbreviated with the letters CB. And there's two types of um, low cloud types that represent Cumulonimbus. There's the L3 cloud type, with, which does not have an anvil, and then the L9 type, which has an anvil. And so we'll show you an example of these here in a moment. All right, so cumulonimbus, some of the characteristics, have a great vertical extent, great vertical height, 40,000 feet or higher, uh, a large size circular element. Uh, the tops are bright white. The bases, you'll notice, will be darker gray. Um, they're generally poor and violent weather indicators. When you see CBs, these L3 or L9s, which they can produce thunder, lightning, hail, heavy rain, showers. So you get a lot of very common precipitation with these type of clouds, always showery in nature. And that showery precip is usually heavy in intensity where one minute you see it's just cloudy out your window, the next minute it's just a heavy downpour of rain. They have cauliflower shaped tops, so they can also have these wispy cirrus clouds kind of streaming off the tops of them. They have fibrous edges. Uh, the anvil top, if it reaches a tropopause or even up, up trying to punch through the troposphere into the stratosphere, it's going to have a flattened anvil shape. And the bases may drop as low as 1,000 feet with these type of clouds. Uh, they may also form pouches at their base, and that's a special type of cloud known as mammatus. So here's some example. Look at this. This is a L3 type cumulon, or um, a low cloud type cumulonimbus type cloud. So you notice. Look at this. It looks like we're forming an anvil in this case. Very um, distinct edges to this cloud structure, right? Um, so this is an example of a cumulonimbus cloud. And this is definitely a cumulonimbus here. It's producing lightning in multiple areas from cloud to the ground. And you'll notice this definitely has an anvil shape at the top. And then finally, uh, another um, cumulonimbus cloud. You kind of see an anvil shape here. Um, in the upper left-hand portion of this picture where I've got my little laser pointer at. Um, so again, this is a very um, violent type situation when you see a cumulonimbus an L3 or L9 type cloud. And then sometimes these cumulonimbus clouds, these L3s, L9s, they can form a mattice clouds on their underside of the base. So you notice the cool pouch-like structure on the underside of this cumulonimbus cloud. And they can also produce hail. And this is courtesy of Australian um, severe weather, um, Australia area here. Um, this, this image just shows different shapes of hailstones. And you'll notice um, some of these have layers to them. Some of these hailstones have layers to them. And, and each layer is represented by every time the, um, the hailstone goes, drops in the base of the cloud on a downdraft and goes back up on updraft, and another layer of ice freezes upon it. Um, so you can tell how many trips a hailstone has made in a cumulonimbus cloud by just examining how many layers it has. All right, so now let's move on to the stratocumulus clouds, uh, stratocumulus L4 and L5, and there's a distinction between the two we'll go over here. Here's some of the characteristics of stratocumulus. They have little or no vertical extent. They have large size elements, the closely spaced oval shaped elements. Stratocumulus generally do not produce precipitation. It's very rare. Um, they have a rounded or lumpy cloud mass structure. They have very flattened base with flat lumpy tops. And the formation can be by the spreading out of cumulus clouds, uh, lifting of a stratus layer as well. 
Um, it's generally unstable below, but more stable aloft. So you get instability, but then you have a cap over the top of these clouds, um, which is more stable over the top. So the distinction between a L L4 cloud type stratocumulus and the L5 cloud type stratocumulus, the L4 is formed by the spreading out of cumulus, and then the L5 is not formed by the spreading out of cumulus. And then you also have this cloud type associated with uh, the L8 cloud type, which is cumulus and stratocumulus at the same time with bases at different levels in the atmosphere. <laughs> so let's take a look at some of the pictures of these. So you notice how you have more of a kind of like a lumpy top structure to these, but it, but they're more layer like overall, right? This would be an example of stratocumulus, very layer like, but yet have a puffier top. And the, these clouds, you know, anytime you see the clouds, at the base, you have instability. So that's where these red arrows are coming in. So you have rising air motion and unstable conditions. But at, from the top down, you have these blue arrows in each of these cloud elements, and that indicates stability. So unstable beneath the cloud base, stable above the cloud itself, and that results in more of a flattened appearance. Here's another example of stratocumulus. Um, so notice how we have more layer-like structures again to these clouds. Um, so that's the big identifier. And then if you were flying in an airplane, so there's a city here, there's a coastline here. This is a cool shot. This is from somebody from an airplane. Um, you can just kind of see this more of the layer-like structure of these clouds. Um, this is associated, this is basically the stratocumulus. So a layer type of puffy cloud, see that? All right, now we'll go into stratus, which is else the low cloud type six and the low cloud type seven. Um, and I'll break down the difference here in a moment, but stratus have very little vertical extent. There's just not much rising air motion in, in stratus clouds. They have no individual elements. Uh, these are the days where you just see a uniform sheet or blanket across the sky. Um, so they generally cover the whole sky. You don't really see any blue sky in between the elements. You may see an occasional break, but it's rare. Uh, has diffuse edges, stratus clouds, and, and the bases can be as low as 100 feet. Um, but generally, there's no precipitation associated with stratus. You may get a little bit of drizzle or that light mist, um, but that would be about it. Now, the difference between the L6 and L7 is L6, low cloud 6 stratus, is stratus or ragged stratus other than bad weather. And then L7 would be ragged stratus or ragged cumulus of bad weather. So it just depends on the stability of the day. So L6 clouds are what you've generally seen um, on a you know a day where you have a fine drizzle or fine mist um, and a very sheet like or blanket like appearance dull gray and then l7 would be perhaps uh, beneath a thunderstorm cloud maybe some saturation is occurring beneath a thunderstorm cloud um, and and you're getting like these little fragments of stratus beneath it so let's take a look at the stratus cloud here um so you know this case here right let's go back L6 is other than uh, not associated with bad weather is L6. So this would be an example of L6 stratus cloud. Notice how layer-like or blanket-like these clouds appear. Here's another example of a stratus cloud. Um, you kind of see this stratus cloud nestled in some higher elevation or higher terrain in this picture. Um, but yeah, you see very, it looks like a blanket, doesn't it? And you really don't see much what in the way of blue sky in between any of these of this cloud at all. Um, it's usually a pretty solid overcast associated with stratus. And then an example of stratus closer to the ground. When a stratus cloud is actually on the ground, it's known as fog. And so you clearly see on this particular image um, stratus basically on the surface of the earth in this example. So fog is a stratus cloud on the ground. All right, that wraps up the part one. This is where we're going to basically pick it up on the next training video uh, when we talk about you know some of the basic meteorological concepts with clouds and precipitation. So we're going to continue our journey in the next video, starting with mid clouds, and then we'll go into the high clouds and the various classifications of the clouds, the M1 clouds through M9 uh, and H1 through H9 clouds. And then we'll break down like types of precipitation at the very end um, to really conclude this training video. But I do appreciate everyone's subscription to the Spot On Weather YouTube channel. 
Um, I'm hoping to do these videos a little bit more regularly, but you know, as everybody knows, life does happen. And so, um, you know, I'll try to fit these in where I can fit them in. And, uh, but I have a lot more to come. Um, so I hope you learned a little bit in today's video about, you know, instability and stability of the atmosphere and the type of clouds you would see associated with those things. And that's all I got for now, everybody. Looking forward to a wonderful summer of training. Uh, hopefully you're going to get a lot out of it. All right, that wraps things up today. Until next time, take care and God bless everyone.